Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Irina Steinbeck. I'm the founder and managing director at Data Crossroads. We provide training and consulting services to companies that want to get in control of their data and information resources. I have been working in the area of data management for over 10 years. I have compiled my practical experience to develop a model and practical method to implement and optimize data management. I have called this model the orange model of data management. This model is a collection of techniques and templates for development and optimization of data management and assessments of its maturity. This pragmatic approach is based on the design and implementation of data value chain enabled by a set of data management capabilities. In this presentation, I would like to give you a brief overview of the Orange model and its areas of application. I will address several questions. Why did I see the need to develop the model while there were already plenty of other data management and data governance models? What are the key principles, approaches, and areas of the application of the model? Which components constitute the model? And of course, the most important question is how to implement this method in practice. Let's start with the first question. Why has the new model been developed and introduced in the first place? Almost every data management professional at some point of their career comes across the following crucial question. Which industry reference model should I use for the implementation of data management? What are the key data management capabilities that are feasible for my company and fit for purpose and resources? How do I measure the maturity of data management function and compare that with those of my peers in the industry? What are the logical steps in the implementation of data management? Does it sound familiar to you? I started with these questions myself more than 10 years ago. And since then, I have been looking for the answers. I would like to emphasize the following. The orange model is the summary of my practical experience. First came the practice, then the hands-on experience has been put into the theoretical model. You're probably thinking, there are plenty of different data management and data governance models and industry reference guides. Why don't you simply use them? Why did you develop the orange model? The answer is simple. I have read, analyzed, and tried to implement several of the most well-known models. While doing it, I discovered certain challenges with the existing models and guides. I will briefly illustrate you some of these challenges by comparing two leading industry reference guides. Dama Dame book, full title is a Data Management Body of Knowledge by the Dama International and DECAM, Data Management Capability Assessment Model by the Enterprise Data Management Council. These two guides have several differences. First of all, the list of data management building blocks. Dama uses knowledge areas as the key business blocks. The CAM operates with components, capabilities, and sub-capabilities. Even at the first glance, you can see that the number and names of the blocks differ. DAMA has 11 knowledge areas and the CAM has 7 components, 31 capabilities, and 106 sub-capabilities. One of the most important differences is the relationship between data management and IT. According to DAMA, data management is part of IT domain. The CAM considers IT as a part of the collaborative environment. Personally, I agree with the CAM. In my opinion, data management is an independent business function. Its role is the coordination of activities of all data and data management related stakeholders. The relationship between IT and data management has also brought me to understanding of differences in approaches to data management between DAMA and DECAM. DAMA takes a look at data management from a broad perspective. 
Dama considers data management from the point of view of the life cycle of data circulating in a company. The CAM narrows perspective considers data management from the viewpoint of tasks to be performed by data management professionals. These differences in the approaches specify differences in the content of data management. There is one point that combines both models. They both give a version and vision of what data management is, not how it should be implemented. Let me summarize the challenges that I have encountered. Challenge one, the well-known and adapted industry reference guides and models have fundamental conceptual differences. I have just demonstrated the differences between DAMA and DECAM. Challenge two, there are differences in data management terminology definitions and the content of data management business capabilities or functions described in the leading industry guides. For example, the term data governance in the context of DAMA and DECAM significantly differ by corresponding artifacts. Challenge three, the leading industry guides offer knowledge on data management related subjects. Unfortunately, they don't provide a comprehensive method for the implementation of the data management function. Challenge four, there are several data management and data governance maturity models available. These models have quite different meta models. Therefore, obtained results cannot be compared. Challenge five, to make a reliable assessment of data management maturity, the data management model and data management maturity model that are being used should be aligned. I mean that they should be based on the same meta model, but very often this is not the case. Challenge six, the current situation with multiple non-aligned maturity models doesn't allow any benchmarking between different companies. I will share with you my vision about data management. Once I was asked to explain in 15 minutes how to implement data management using DAMA. Even for data management professionals, the DAMA model is not easy to understand. The knowledge areas belong to different subject areas. When I got this request, finally I found a way to easily explain it. Data and information resources are the core subject of data management. Data has quality. Enterprise architecture describes, classifies, models, and designs data and information. By enterprise architecture, I mean business data application and technology architecture. Business architecture is not part of data management, but it has relation to data, so it's useful to take it into consideration. Data governance or data management framework is the last component of data management from the narrow point of view. You will recall that the narrow point of view represents the view on data management from the perspective of data management professionals. All boxes marked orange represent this narrow view point. The enterprise architecture box is marked half orange. It's because that application and technology architecture belong to IT domain. The rest of data management components belong to the broad perspective on data management and colored gray. Information technology enables the life cycle of data and information resources. Enterprise architecture describes, classifies, models and design information technology. Security enables security of data and information resources. And enterprise architecture, especially the application and technology architecture, designs security. Data management framework coordinates activities between data management and IT and security function. In my experience, the majority of large international companies understand data management in a narrow scope. The most common Data management sub capabilities as those that are orange data uh, management framework, data quality, data modeling and architecture, and uh, data 
assets management. These capabilities form the basis of the orange model of data management. This is the end of the first part of the presentation. We have taken a look at the challenges associated with the existing data management models and maturity models. We have examined the most common components of data management from a broad and narrow perspective. Now it's time to move on and take a look at the orange model. We will discuss what distinguishes the orange model from existing models, and we will take a closer look at the key principles, approaches, and areas of its application. First of all, the name of the model. The model was named after the fruit. Few people know that an orange is actually a hybrid between a pomelo and a mandarin. It was the hybrid analogy that was the inspiration for the name of the model. It perfectly symbolizes the attempt to match the pomelo of existing data management models with the mandarin of existing data management maturity models. I will briefly introduce the key principle of the model. In the course of the presentation, I will provide deeper explanation for some. Principle one, the key value proposition of data management is enabling the transformation of data into meaningful information. This principle explains why a company needs data management at all. Principle two, Data management is a business capability. Business capability means an ability of a company to reach business goals or deliver expected outcomes. This principle assists us to design and implement data management. Principle three, data management delivers its key value proposition through the data and information value chain enabled by the set of sub capabilities. It stresses that data flows through the company and the structure of data management frame should reflect it. Principle four, the implementation of data management follows the logic of documentation of data and information value chain. This is the core insight of my practical experience. The whole orange model is based on this idea. Principle five, data management capability should be set up as an independent data management function. In practice, you often see that data management belongs either to IT or to finance. In my opinion, the key role of data management is the coordination of effort of all data stakeholders, including IT and finance. Therefore, I always support the idea that data management should be implemented as an independent function similar to audit. Principle six, the orange model is not specific to any industry or company size. It means that it can be used for any company regardless of its size and industry. Let's start with the first principle of the orange model. The key value proposition of data management is enabling the transformation of data into meaningful information. Let's think about how data management assists in reaching your business goals and what are the key outcomes of data management. The answer comes from the analysis of the role of information and data in the business life cycle. To survive long term and to ensure steady growth, a company needs to develop business value for its customers. The Porter model describes the process of the value creation for external stakeholders. One of the key value propositions of data management to internal stakeholders is to support decision making. Information is required for making decisions at any organizational level. To get the required information, you need to first acquire corresponding raw data. Data and information value chain ensure the transformation of raw data into meaningful information. For simplicity, I will shorten the term data information value chain to data chain and will use it in the presentation. Business processes enable the functioning of data chain. Technology support the performance of business processes 
and a performance of a data chain. I call this picture the cycle of data value creation. This picture represents the complex of data chain, business processes, and technology that forms the data management capability. The key high-level outcomes of data management capability are to establish and maintain control over the data and information resources and to create and realize value of these resources. The second principle says that data management is a business capability. So we have just specified the key components of data management capability based on the analysis of the data value creation cycle. In the development of the orange model, I used the model of business capability developed by the open group. It describes a business capability in four dimensions. The first one is the process. By process, I mean a business process that is a set of activities that produce outcomes. The second dimension is data. It represents information and knowledge that is either required to produce an outcome or represents the outcome itself. The third dimension is roles. Roles describe participation of people in the delivery of outcomes. The fourth dimension is tools. Tools stand for technological systems and application and resources required. And I hope that you have noticed the similarities with the cycle of data value creation. By now, we have spoken about data management capability at a high level of abstraction. But data management requires a practical and pragmatic approach to make it functional. In order to take steps from the theory to practice, Data management should break it down into sub-capabilities at a lower level. Earlier in the presentation, we have specified that the most common data management sub-capabilities are data governance, data modeling and architecture, and data quality. Here I give an example of a detailed description of data governance. In the orange model, I use another name, data management framework. This name better reflects the essence of this subcapability. Data management frameworks create a frame in which data management operates. This frame is a set of rules and roles. To make this subcapability functional, each dimension should be worked out. Each dimension supports other dimensions. The dimension data represents the key artifacts of the data management framework. These are, for example, the list of business drivers, data management strategy, roadmap, policies, etc. To develop and maintain these artifacts, relevant business processes should be put in place. Processes by themselves are sets of action. Actions should be performed by people. Roles represent people. For example, in the creation of data management policy, different roles will be involved. To be able to develop all of these artifacts, first you need resources, for example, budget. You also need an application where you can record and maintain your artifacts. Resources and systems are represented by tools. When you describe all of your data management sub-capabilities in such a way, you get a complete picture of your data management and its key deliverables. This is a very pragmatic and practical approach to specify data management outcomes. It also assists to align processes, roles, deliverables between and among different sub-capabilities. This model allows you to measure the maturity of data management and specify data management key performance indicators. Now let's take a closer look at the third principle of the orange model. It outlines that data management delivers its key value proposition through the data chain enabled by the set of sub-capabilities. We have already specified the key value proposition of data management, which is the enabling of transformation of data into information. There are some other value propositions, such as a control and safeguarding of data and information resources, 
and creation and utilization of the value of these resources. The value proposition are at a higher level of abstraction. For different data stakeholders, you must break them down. Data management delivers uh, these propositions by answering five key questions each data stakeholder should have. Question one, what information do stakeholders need and why? The answer to this question will immediately limit your data management initiative. Once I heard about the company that was supposed to optimize 11,000 reports. The question, does the management of the company really need so many reports? Or does a management report need dozens of pages? Question two, who does what in respect to data transformation? Data management has a lot of stakeholders. So to optimize data management, you need a clear distribution of accountabilities. Question three, what does the data and information mean? Take, for example, the word customer. We all know that finance and sales departments may have quite different definitions from their professional perspectives. This is where a lot of data issues start. You need to clarify and align definitions used within the company. Question four is one of the most difficult and crucial question. Where is data located and which transformations does the data undergo? Answering this question is one of the most challenging tasks of data management. This task is most time and resource intensive. All data lineage initiatives focus on the answering of this question. Question five, last but definitely not least question is about data quality. Poor data quality can often trigger the need for data management, but it should be clearly understood. To give an answer about data quality, you should first find answers to the first four questions. As I have stressed before, the orange model strives not only to describe the data management key capabilities, but also to deliver a straightforward and pragmatic approach to implement it. Principle four sounds as the following. The implementation of data management follows the logic of the documentation of data chain enabled by a set of business capabilities. This principle came from my practical experience in implementation of data management frameworks and data lineage. This principle includes two key components, data and information value chain at and set of capabilities. Data chain is a set of actions to transform raw data into meaningful information. There are two common phases, design and technical implementation of data chain. On this slide, you can see two steps that belong to the design phase. These are specification of requirements and design steps. It's common that data management professionals together with the business department perform these steps. The technical implementation phase includes two general steps, design and implementation of data processing and usage of data. Of course, these four steps are at a high level of abstraction. In reality, each company should have many data chains and each chain should be described and optimized at a lower level of detail. If you recall, we spoke about data management capabilities in the narrow and breadth scope. The narrow scope is the capabilities that are commonly performed by data management professionals. On the slide, you see which of these capabilities should enable the data chain at different stages. Common data management capabilities in the narrow scope are data management framework, data modeling, information system architecture, and data quality. They all are marked orange. The broad scope of data management capabilities include those that should be performed by IT. You can see some of them on the slide marked dark gray. These capabilities are application and technology architecture, data lifecycle, and infrastructure management. There are also some other capabilities that don't directly relate to data management, but still are required to enable the data chain. They are marked in light gray. How does principle four really works? 
There are several challenges with the practical implementation of data management. The first one is to link inputs and outcomes of different data management capabilities in the logical order. The second challenge is to focus only on those capabilities that fit your company needs and resources and make your initiative feasible. It's also important to deliver results and show the value of data management to key stakeholders in a reasonable amount of time. I consolidated my more than 10 year practical experience in the method that I call Data Management Star. The full description of this method you can find in my book Data Management Toolkit. Here on the slide, you can see a short overview of the key steps that company needs to undertake to implement data management successfully. Now it's time to discuss the key application areas of the orange model. There are six key areas of application. I will share with you these areas in logical order. The first one is development of data strategy. Every company needs to align its data management initiative with the business, financial, IT strategy, etc. If your company has no data management function yet, I will not recommend to start the development of the formal strategy document. It's a time and resource intensive process. I know a lot of companies that have the data management function in place, but still don't have a strategy document in place. There are some other simple ways to align your data management initiative. For example, you align data management initiative with a business strategy by defining business drivers for your initiative. Alignment between IT and data and data management principles ensures alignment between IT and data management. The data strategy will allow you to specify the scope of data management capabilities that fit the needs and resources of your company. The next uh, application area is maturity assessment. Every company does uh, data management to some extent, either in informal or informal form. Therefore, before starting a data management initiative, it's important to assess whether it's already available in the company. Maturity assessment also assists in setting up a required level of maturity and to set the gaps between as is and to be situation. Maturity assessment should result in development of roadmap. The third application is the implementation of data management function from scratch. I have just given you an overview of the data management star methodology by Data Crossroads. This methodology provides a practical implementation approach. The fourth application area is optimization of particular sub capabilities. It's possible that your company needs to optimize or develop a new data management sub capability. The four dimensional model of data management sub capabilities will allow you to do that. The fifth application is a design and implementation of data management processes and roles. This is one of the most challenging tasks that a lot of companies face. Using the four dimensional model of a sub capability, you will succeed in developing the set of processes and roles that match your company situation. If your company has already achieved the desired to be maturity level, the task of monitoring its performance is the next on the list. The orange model will assist you in developing a system of key performance indicators to monitor performance. There are some other additional techniques available to evaluate performance, effectiveness, revenue and cost contribution, and criticality of each data management type of capabilities. In my following up presentation, I will work out each of these application areas in details one by one. We have covered the second part of our presentation. I have shared with you the key principles, approaches and areas of application of the orange model. Now I would like to briefly demonstrate a practical example of the application of the orange model. Last year, I have developed a short data management maturity scan that will help you to do a quick assessment of your current situation with data management. The scan consists of 20 questions and will take you about 10 minutes to fill in. If you're interested, 
please check it on my website datacrossroad.nl. You can see the link on the screen. The results of the scan have been collected anonymously. During a period of nine months in 2019, around 70 participants have performed this scan. I found that the first results have exposed some very interesting patterns. So I decided to have a closer look at them and make a brief analysis. I have published the first conclusions in the Data Management Assessment Review. You can download this review for free on my website. You can see the link to this document on the screen. I would like to share with you the maturity assessment technique. The technique is based on the orange model of data management. The data and value information chain is supported by four data management sub-capabilities. Each answer corresponds with one of five maturity levels and is linked to one of the data management sub-capabilities and one of the four capability dimensions. Now, I would like to share a few interesting results that you can also find in the review. First, all respondents declare to have a formal data management function in place. The most developed capabilities are data management framework and information architecture. The least developed are data and information value chain, data modeling, and data uh, quality. Companies put a lot of effort into developing documentation and implementation of tools that have less success in delivery of actual data management artifacts. This is the end of this presentation. I hope I have managed to give you an idea about the basics of the Orange model of data management. Should you still have questions, please reach out to me through our website datacrossroads.nl or connect with me on LinkedIn. You can also schedule a free 30 minutes consultation with me. Also, if you have any feedback, please leave it in the comments section below this video. And thank you for joining me today.